Father Raul Lemus, a priest of the Diocese of Santa Rosa, pastor of St. Joseph's Parish in Catati. Hello, my name is Father John Kloss. I'm the chaplain at Cardinal Newman High School. Yes, my name is Father Samuel Moses Brown, and I'm from Sonoma County. I grew up in Petaluma. I lived in Catati, Grand Park, and Santa Rosa. I'm Father Alvin Villaruel. I'm the pastor at St. Francis Solano Church in Sonoma. I was ordained last year, 2020, just before the pandemic. I graduated from the seminary in 2013, and that's when I became a priest. 19 years as of this July. I will be celebrating my 27th year as a priest. To be a priest means to be a humble servant, first and foremost, of Christ, and um, to bring out the best in, in others by getting them closer to Christ, the Blessed Mother and the saints, Thus, for them discovering their worth as God's children destined to be uh, destined for heaven. To be a priest means to be a spiritual father to God's people, to be the head of the body. We are all members of Christ's body, but the body needs a head both spiritually and physically. So the visible church has a hierarchical structure. And no matter where the church is found, there is leadership. So the priest fulfills that role of leadership, just like the father in a family, guiding the flock, teaching the flock, and perhaps most importantly, sanctifying God's people through the administration of the sacraments and many other prayers which the priest prays. Well, to be a priest means that one is first off a priest for Jesus Christ within the context of the church that he created. So that's what we call the Roman Catholic Church. And so when we're a priest, it means that we offer sacrifice on behalf of the people or in union with the people um, who are present at Mass. And being a priest also means being able to preach the Word of God. <laughs> Good question. It was nerve-wracking, but at the same time, it was grace-filled. It was a wonderful experience. I will never, ever forget the first time I celebrated Mass. I was very nervous but when I celebrated Mass for the first time uh, because I it was it was my first Mass, so very sacred and a lot of important components were made up in it. My father was serving as deacon. Uh, the priest who vested me and, and who came from El Salvador from our nation, he was there. And um, I, I made some mistakes that were really embarrassing. It, it was beautiful, you know, to be in, you know, saying the words of institution. To celebrate Mass for the first time was a humbling experience, but also quite elating because it's a moment much longed for. There is much excitement and joy, not only in my own heart, but in the heart of my family and friends who came from near and far to attend. It was just a, un, an unrepeatable moment. Well, to celebrate Mass for the first time was truly a blessed and holy experience, and it was the culmination of so many things that came before. And so I was super excited and super happy. Of course, exactly celebrating Mass um, is my um, most favorite part of being, um, being a priest. Um, and uh, especially being part also of the most important moment in the lives of others and being to say, being able to serve um, the Lord and others without counting the cost. My favorite thing about being a priest is preaching. I love to preach, I love to give talks, um, reflections, I, I love to give homilies. Um, and a lot of those times, if not all of those times, I'm also preaching to myself. My favorite part of being a priest is probably uh, preaching. So I really like to preach the Word of God. And so I put some time into my homilies and consider what people would like to hear. The other part of priest that I really do enjoy is being able to teach.
Oh yeah, I do. I do remember. A week after I was ordained, um, I was I was already in residence at Saint Thomas Aquinas in Napa, and um, someone knocked on the door, and I opened the door, and the person wanted um, confession to go to confession, and so I went and ran to um, Father Jerry Brady, who was my pastor, um, and so he looked at me and said, "You're a priest. Go do it." I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. There was one time when I was at a parish at daily mass and I had prepared a, a short homily for that mass. And when the lector was reading the readings, a different idea came to me. I was like, wait a minute, why didn't I see this? And so I used that idea that came to me and gave the homily at daily mass. And then someone at the end of Mass says, Father, that homily was meant just for me. And I could just tell that the Holy Spirit had really, uh, was really involved in that moment. Sure, so in every type of life that we might choose, there will be difficulties. And so when people are looking for life with no difficulties, I don't really know what kind of life they're looking for because that's not very realistic. Oh yes, it's difficult. Um, there's many aspects that make it difficult. There's also many aspects that make it a blessing, but you have to take the difficult with the blessings. In those moments, I think it's my prayer life that sustains me in that. It can be difficult to be a priest, no doubt. There are challenges of long hours, of perhaps lack of understanding, and it really is a different lifestyle, unique. So it can be hard to find friends who can relate other than fellow priests. But those fellow priests really are a tremendous solace in moments of difficulties because they go through the same thing. Of course, we can't forget our friend at the altar, our Lord, um, holy hour and rosary, in addition to uh, the divine office, provide a kind of grounding in daily life of the priest. There's something to look forward to, to reconnect with the heart of the priesthood, which is the Eucharistic heart of Jesus. Now, for me, like any other vocation, as you know, there are ups and downs, um, joys, sorrows, works, sufferings, and triumphs, of course. Um, but I always turn to my, my inspirations First of all, the cross. Obviously, you know, that's really the instrument of God's triumph, and I want to be part of that. Um, but also, he did it by suffering. So uh, there's the balance there. And also, uh, every time I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sort of like in a difficult situation, I think about the first disciples and the apostles um, and think about what they did. Um, you know, I draw strength from their perseverance. I would recommend that a young man considering the priesthood would be, first of all, courageous, willing to do what might not be the easiest thing, seeking advice, seeking counsel and prayer are certainly the really starting points. I would certainly say in terms of what to pray, that the rosary is of um, the most importance in terms of our prayer. But I would also say that adoration can be um, very helpful. One is to go to Mass, not just on Sundays. If you can go to daily Mass, attend daily Mass several times a week. Uh, then also spend some time before the Blessed Sacrament. Uh, go to confession regularly. And then also, you know, in line with all that, have a spiritual director, someone who can guide you. And uh, first and foremost, pray. Uh, pray, 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 pray. Attend Mass regularly, because that's what I did. And then don't dwell too much because um, being unworthy, because at some point I was doing that, and I'm not worthy to do this. I'm not worthy to do this, uh, because I thought my mistake defined me. But no, your mistakes do not define you. And my suggestion is for them to trust the Lord, that the Lord will always be there as long as you have him as the center of your life. And then he'll help you to persevere. And so that's what I did.